Okay, welcome back. Now the example I'm going to do, it's called interference pattern of a double slit with a glass plate. So the regular uh, interference pattern is that when a, a, a beam of monochromatic light of wavelength lambda comes up upon a double slit and the distance between the slits is D, right? It forms an interference pattern here, right? And the equation for the bright and dark fringes, right? Uh, what is the equation for that? So if the path length difference, right? The path length difference, uh, so if this is D2, D1, the path length difference from one of the slits approaching there minus the path length difference minus the distance of the other one, so D2 minus D1, that's equal to this distance D, and then this is theta, so we can say it's equal to D sine theta, so this expression, D sine theta, represents the path difference between well, one of the rays of light and the other ray of light, right? D sine theta, when this is equal to N lambda, right? This is, will give you constructive interference. Constructive interference, right? So this will give you the N equals one, this is N equals zero, one, two, three. The N equals one will give you the first bright fringe next to the central maximum. This is called the central maximum. And this is called the first order maximum. N equals two will give you the second order maximum and so on and so forth, right? If I wanna know the location of the first minimum, right? So then I say D sine theta is equal to n plus a half lambda, where n is equal to zero, one, two, three. So uh, the first minimum will occur before the first maximum occurs, right? So this is the first minimum. And then you have first maximum, then you have second minimum. So then you put here two, uh, zero for the first minimum, right? Zero for the first minimum, one for the second minimum, two for the third minimum, and so on and so forth, right? So this equation, can be simplified a little bit by saying sine of theta for most applications, so this distance here from uh, the center to any location, this is called x, so we can express it like this. So we measure from the central maximum, we measure outward like this. This is x, right, along the screen. And then this from here to here, this is uh, theta. So we're gonna say sine of theta is gonna be similar to tangent of theta. So d sine theta is equal to d tangent theta, approximately, why? Because usually this distance between the slits is gonna be small and the screen is gonna be quite far. So usually the angles are gonna be small, these angles of the, uh, the interference pattern. So for small angles, sine theta and tangent theta are approximately the same. So then we can say d tangent theta, and then tangent theta is x divided by the distance between the screens, which is d. So then it's gonna be d times x over uh, d, that's equal to n lambda. So if I wanted to know the, dis the x position to any of the maximums, what do I do? I say x equals to n lambda d divided by little d, okay? This gives me the distance to any of the maximums, and then if I use the other equation, right, it gives me um, n plus a half lambda d over d. And this gives me the distance to any of the minimums, right? So now the next question is what happens when I put a glass medium uh, with a certain index of refraction? Okay, so what happens if I put a glass medium, let's say that the thickness of the glass medium is L and it has a certain thickness a uh, certain index of refraction n, right? So then what's gonna happen? Well, uh, the, the whole pattern will shift by a certain amount. So we wanna now develop the equation for that shift and in which direction will that shift? Well, what's gonna happen? How did the central maximum become the central maximum? When we didn't have a glass plate, the distance traveled to that point, right? And the time that it took for the two rays of light to travel to that point was the same, 
okay? But now, because the light has to travel through a thicker medium, a higher index of refraction, it's gonna take a longer time, right? So it should travel this light beam in order for this light beam and this light beam to get there at the same time, right? To get there at the same time, this one should travel a longer distance because why? Because it doesn't have to go through a glass medium. This one has to go through a glass medium, so it should travel less distance. And then, so somewhere here will be the central maximum. Central maximum. So which direction will the central maximum shift? It will shift towards the direction of the heavier index of refraction. If we had two glass mediums, right? Imagine I put another glass medium. Let's say this one is N2, this is N1, right? N2 is, could be larger than N1, let's say, right? So then what's gonna happen, uh, depending on which one has the greater index of refraction, let's say this, the length is L, right? So then you say, if N2 is larger than N1, then the shift is towards the one that has the higher index of refraction to give that light beam enough of a chance to, to get there at the same time that this one does, right? So the shift is always towards the higher index of refraction, okay? So then uh, how do we get the equation of this expression, okay? So, okay, so the argument is gonna be that, uh, let's assume that they're the same length, so the path difference is gonna be um, N2, L minus N1L, right? And if the path difference has to equal to the original equation. Remember the original equation was D sine theta is equal to N lambda, and D sine theta we could approximate as what? Dx over D is equal to N lambda. So the Dx over D represents what? It, the, it's the path difference of the two beams due to the fact that they're coming out from different um, from different slits, right? So the meaning of d sine theta is the path difference. So in, in our case, what's the extra path difference that we have created? We've created an extra path difference due to the fact that this one has to go through a heavier index of refraction, right? So it's gonna take a longer time to get there. So the path difference is N2L minus N1L. That When that e is equal to the original path difference, dx over d, this tells you how much the shift amount of the pattern. So the central maximum will, will move over and everything will move over together by the same amount, right? So then uh, if we wanna get a general equation and two, we can even make the lengths different. I can make this one thicker, right? L2 and L1, right? If I make the index of refraction uh, bigger and I make this length bigger, than L1, then of course the shift is even more towards the direction of that because not only is the glass thicker, but it's also uh, has a high heavier index of refraction, right? So it will definitely move over towards that direction. So we have here N2L2 minus N1L1, that's equal to dx over d, and then I can uh, calculate for the x, that's equal to d over d, N2L2 minus N1L1. So that's gonna be the shift amount. So let's calculate this for some numbers. Okay, so let's say the index of refraction of this medium N2 is 1.6. Let's say N1 is 1.5, right? That would be this glass. Let's say L2 is the thickness of that glass, 1.2 centimeters. Let's say the thickness of the, this glass is 1.0 centimeters. Okay, let's say the distance between the slits, that's usually a small number, so let's make that one millimeter. And then let's say the distance to the screen is equal to five meters. Okay, so then what would the shift amount of the whole pattern be? So all I wanna know is the, the total shift amount. So for where if the central maximum was right in the middle, how much did it shift? Okay, so X is equal to, so you put big D as five meters divided by little d, so this is one times 10 to the minus three meters, right? And then you put the index of refraction N2, 1.6, right? Times 1.2 centimeter, right? right? So 1.6, and then the L2, 1.2 centimeters, so you change that to meters, 0.012 meters minus, 
right? And then L N one would be one point five, okay? Times uh, L one would be point oh one, okay? So let's see what the answer would be. That's x equals twenty one meters. Pretty amazing, huh? That's a huge shift amount from uh, from the central maximum all the way here, twenty one meters. So uh, it's very, very noticeable, okay? Now, what if they were the same length? Let's say that they were both 1.2 centimeters. That's going to reduce the shift amount, right? So 0.012, right? Now, now what will the answer be? Now only six meters. Just by changing slightly, making this one, uh, making the top one as thick as the bottom one. Right? Just I changed this from 1.0 centimeter to 1.2 centimeter. That changed the shift amount very drastically. Instead of shifting downwards by 21 meters, it's shifting downwards by only 6 meters, right? Now, what if we made this one thicker? Okay, so then you got two competing things going on. Here the index of refraction is higher, so it has to go through a, it's gonna slow down to do that, but it's not as thick. If we made this one thicker, it doesn't slow down there as much, but it's got a lot of far distance to travel, right? So if we made this 1.4 centimeters, so er earlier at the beginning it was 1.0 centimeter, then I jumped to 1.2, and now I'm jumping to 1.4. So then what's gonna happen? Okay. So then it's gonna be uh, one negative 90. Well, because this is larger, even though its index of refraction is less than this, but because it's larger, the shift amount is now towards the top one, okay? So the shift amount is nine meters. So, so slight variations of the thicknesses and the index of refractions have a large effect on how much the shift amount would be. What if this one was 1.3, what would happen, okay? Uh, meters. So now it shifted to the to the top one, but not that much, only 1.5 meters. So you can see here how you can experiment with this uh, and have different combinations. You could even make it so that the combined index of refraction and their lengths make it so that the thing doesn't shift at all, right? The central maximum stays the same. You could also kind of see how this experiment can be used to find the index of refraction of an unknown material, right? Let's say this material is something you know the index of refraction is exactly 1.5 and let's say N2 you don't know. You don't know N2. Let's say you know the lengths of both of them, you know the index of refraction of this and you don't know the index of refraction of that. And then you do an experiment, you determine how much this shifted and then towards which direction it shifted, right? And then once you know which direction it shifted, so that you know the X value and then you know all the lengths, but you don't know the index of refraction of one of the materials. So you can use this as an experiment to calculate the index of, uh, the index of refraction of any material, right? And then you can put different kinds of glasses, prisms, all kinds of objects, right? And then you can determine the index of refraction of that material, okay? Thank you very much.